Welcome to Season 3, Episode 55 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing Goodspeed Musicals' production of Dreamgirls with book and lyrics by Tom Ian, music by Henry Krieger, directed by Lily Ann Brown, and choreographed by Brayon Arzell, running through December 30th at Goodspeed Opera House at 6 Main Street in East Haddam, Connecticut. I want to take a moment here to express my appreciation to everyone who has stuck with me these two and a half seasons watching my reviews. If you'd like to support my show, I encourage you to visit my Patreon page where you can, for as little as $1 a month, support my show. I'll have a link in the description. I'm a big fan of Dreamgirls. It captures the tumultuous drama that surrounded the world of Motown records and artists like Diana Ross and the Supremes, James Brown, Marvin Gaye, and the like. And what's great about it is that it does it without having to kowtow to Barry Gordy and Motown records by not using actual Motown music, by composing their own score, and having characters loosely inspired by the real-life artists. The musical focuses on the women's group The Dreams, or The Dreamettes as they are initially named, their rise to fame, and the fallouts of that success. The trio of singers, Dina Jones, played by Tanisa Wilson, Laurel Robinson, played by Kirsten Hodgins, and Effie Melody White, played by Treja Bostic, are performing at Amateur Night at the Apollo Theater, attempting to draw attention and hopefully get a contract. There they meet Curtis Taylor Jr., played by Evan Tyrone Martin, the sort of Barry Gordy character of the show. He connives his way into representing them and gets them set up as background vocalist for Jimmy James Thunder Early, played by Michael Kilgore, who is a blend of James Brown, Sam Cooke, and Marvin Gaye. Curtis and Effie, over time, start a relationship. As the Dreamettes mature as a group, Curtis is able to get them their own record contract at the expense of moving Effie, who is the vocal powerhouse of the group, to backing vocals and moving Dina to lead vocals because Dina has a more traditional look and sound, being slenderer and having a voice that would be more appealing to a white audience. Effie doesn't take the news all that well, and she grows continually suspicious of Curtis and Dina, leading to her dismissal from the group and one of the most enduring powerhouse numbers in musical theater history, with the first act closer, and I am telling you, I'm not going. The Dreamettes are obviously analogs of the Supremes. I mean, really, Dina and Diana, how obvious does it need to get? Usually, I'm not a big fan of musicals that pause for concert scenes, and there are a lot of them here. But even though the songs are essentially soul and R&B songs that are performed like a concert piece, there is almost always action going on during the performances that forward the plot. It doesn't necessarily have to be a big moment like Jimmy's Rap, or Jimmy's Got Soul if you prefer, in the second act where he's had enough of Curtis's excessive creative control. Sometimes it's the more subtle performances, like the song Dreamgirls, which elevates the tension between Curtis, Dina, and Effie. As for the good speed production, it is good, but it's not excellent. The easiest way for me to describe it is, if I was an acting teacher and the cast were students in my class, I would tell them that all of their acting choices are correct, but they're not big enough. There are moments of excellence here, but I feel like the performances settled with good moments and I would have liked Lillian Brown to have pushed everyone just a little harder. The key moments are the aforementioned And I Am Telling You I'm Not Going and Jimmy's Got Soul or Jimmy's Rap. Both are great performances as they are, and audiences are going to overall love them, but they could be better. I wanted Effie's five stages of grief to come through her Act 1 finale. Well, 
technically she at best gets through three of those stages, but I wanted her intensity amplified to the point of a real mental breakdown, which doesn't happen. In fact, I found Trajan Bostic's performance of I Am Changing at the top of Act 2 better than I'm Not Going. The same is with Jimmy in Act 2, who literally strips down on stage. I wanted Michael Kilgore's performance to be more suggestive overall, though there is one great moment with the microphone. I wanted more. Evan Tyrone Martin also needs to push just a little harder. He comes off just slimy at times when he needs to be a little sharper in his seductiveness towards Effie and the Dreamettes. And that seems to be the overall problem with this production of Dreamgirls, is that it felt like the cast, or the direction of the cast, didn't push the darker dramatic moments of the show as far as it needed to. Again, not saying it's bad. But at these moments, it feels like it's stuck in fourth gear, revving high and unable to get a clear path to shift into fifth gear, where the drama can really let loose. Now, this is not taking anything away from the cast's vocal talents, which are amazing. Bostic has a booming brassy voice with a slight hint of Nell Carter in it, which is perfect since the role of Effie was originally intended for Nell Carter when the show was conceived. Tatsunisa Wilson does have a beautiful clean tone as Dina as well. I love it. Michael Kilgore has a dynamic voice as Jimmy Early, and when he lets loose, he proves that you don't have to be an ultra skinny guy to have the moves to pull off the role. The design is overall good. Arnel Santianco's scenic design is simplistic and effective, and though the stage is decked in lights, Jason Lynch doesn't hit us with anything blindingly powerful, which is appreciated. Samantha C. Jones's costume designs are overall good. I think the Dreams and Jimmy's outfits are excellent, but sometimes Bostic is dressed in some really odd pieces. There's one dress that makes her look like she's in crumpled aluminum, which just had me kind of cocking my head the entire time. It's like, why did you dress her in that? Good Speed's production of Dreamgirls is good. If you go see it, you should have a great time, but it feels like it was always hitting a little under the mark and needed a little extra push to make it excellent. But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you'd like to see Dreamgirls, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get tickets. Also in the description will be my link to my Patreon page where you can financially support my work. You can also support me by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be Yale Repertory Theater's production of The Salvagers. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.